Hey guys, and welcome to a battle between the forces of the Dowie, led by DBD's very own Papa Palpatine, up against Happy Puppy, representing the Extreme Meme Team, as well as Setra the Imperishable and his Tomb Kings. I believe this was a battle featured on Happy Puppy's recent stream, so I will be linking her channel in the description down below. But let's hop into this, and first and foremost, may I say, the Dowie are making Obi-Wan incredibly proud here, and taking the high ground with their Dragonback Slayers, protecting a cannon and that's what I love to see on River and Maxon using this tiny patch of high ground for artillery can be absolutely invaluable you have a nice bottleneck on either side so you can protect them rather easily however shooting all the way over into the far distance of the battlefield you can sometimes get a little bit stuck by line of sight but really cool flanking position here by the dwarves Ekrand miners are knocking about as well as some dwarf warriors now in the front line he does have basic dwarf warriors dotted all the way along these guys all do have a single chevron for the most part just to keep them fighting that little bit longer with dwarf miners of blast and charges in the secondary line and this is the way i prefer to use miners so i massively approve of this i see a ton of people putting these guys in the front line they throw one blast in charge and then they uh, get into combat and they don't get to use the second one but by putting them in the secondary line you can get both blast and charges off and then start to plug in the gaps where there's any breaks in the lines or fall back and help protect your range core Speaking of the range core, there is going to be triple thunderers here along the back line, protected by double slayers, as well as some iron drakes in the second pocket. These are flame boys, if they can get their shots off, which is easier said than done, can do some huge work up against undead chaff. And then we have a rune lord here, up on top of his mighty anvil of doom, looking incredibly badass. I always feel terrible for these guys down below. And uh, I think he is a very good pick here all round. Rune lords in general are quite competitive, so come in with the master rune of negation, plus 40 4% damage distance is so powerful and the Master Rune of Wrath and Ruin. He also has the Gatekeeper Belt to make him a little bit tankier if he does get low but most importantly apart from the immune psychology which is also quite useful in this matchup he does have Lucas of Power 15% magic resistance worldwide so he is coming in as well with a massive 55% magic resistance so he could duel some of the best Tomb King characters such as Setra who does do magic damage and he will barely take a scratch so really cool inclusion overall. Now for the the forces of Happy Puppy and her Tomb Kings, double carrying up in the sky to do a bit of harass, drop down on artillery crews and so forth, really nice inclusion there. We have Nekakar Warriors dotted in with Skeleton Warriors for the most part, a couple of units of Tomb Guard as well, just to make them a little bit more tanky than hidden in the trees is the real kind of danger of the Tomb Kings. So we have a Tomb Scorpion, which is a fantastic construct, very good up against the tightly packed formations of the Dowie. We have W Shopty Great Bows, who if they can get on top of that cannon can do some huge work, as well as some basic U Shopty to protect them. He looks like we have double... Uh, skeleton chat as well in the distance as Setra the Imperishable is going to be leading the force today on his magic chariot and yes magic so that rune lord certainly wants to get to uh, you know, not up close and personal of Setra although she, she of course does come in with some pretty decent bonus versus infantry AP and the likes Rafa Petra is going to be equipped as well as incantation of protection as well as the cursed blade so super fun build so let's get this cracking and see how it does go so Zushi Shopti certainly wants to be shutting down the thunder and cannon play early on force off the cannon then simply focus down the thunders force the dowie to come to you looks like a couple of early shots were uh, flung up in the air towards those carrying just sending a little bit of a message there that we are not to be messed with um, although they really want to be switching targets as quickly as possible to those who shop to and other bigger targets Back back slides are moving out of their hidden position in the forest here just to get onto the back of the cannon, which means you don't have to stretch your micro too much. If the cannon come in, the Jagback Slayers will slaughter them. Dwarf Warriors army pushing up. I do like leaving Ekron Miners uh, a little bit further back here just because their blast and charges will delete Karen in seconds, but at the same time, getting them on top of those Nekakar Warriors would be an absolute boon. Early cannon fire has been focusing down the basic you shop to it would seem, and these guys have taken a little bit of health damage, but no losses of troops. Great Bows, on the other hand, as well, taking a little bit of damage and poke. So the Tomb Kings are going to be rushing forward here, which isn't too bad of an idea, as the Thunderers do start to lace bullets into the front line. And it looks like the poor Iron Drakes are being focused fired down, realising they're going to be a great threat against the majority of this build. Have a ton of arcing flaming attacks. Arkin as the flame drips on top of these Dwarf Warriors, but decimates those Skeleton Warriors in the front line, already making those guys start to go to critical binding, which is pretty funny. 
Miners are coming in as well, doing some huge work onto Tin God. Fantastic isolation and you know, picking off the correct troops to pull down rather than those basic skeleton warriors who will struggle up against the dwarf warriors. But in comes the chariots. Now, this is going to be the real test of the Dire Resolve. They push through on top of the miners. In comes Setra as well, and the back line is already compromised for the dwarfs. This happens to most games of Dowie, and it's can that they uh, recover the back line quick enough to uh, get back into the game. Getting back slaves easily pull apart the Karen with uh, very good proficiency and effectiveness here, pulling these undead birds down. Cannon crew took a little bit of damage, but they're going to be fine, and they still have enough troops to man all three cannons on the right-hand flank. Some excellent work of the Ekron Miners has depleted these Nekakar Warriors, and the Dwarf Warriors have traded very upwards. Skeleton Warrior Chariots uh, still pushing through the back lines, hopping off Thunderers, bouncing between targets, never sticking anywhere too long, which is always nice to see. And the Ruler, he's just been a bit of a boss in the centre pocket, buffing up all these nearby troops. So it looks like the Dowie are holding relatively effectively so far. Setcher though is at full health and streaking through the back lines on top of these Thunderers. Going to be decimating them incredibly quickly. Once again, that map-wide uh, magic resistance on top of the Dowie's already relatively strong magic resistance is certainly going to be helping them out here. Slayers are pushing up, trying to chase down that Tomb Scorpion and assist some Dwarf Warriors here. Frontline is holding. Tomb Guard will slowly grind through Dwarf Warriors, but it's going to be a bit of a slog for them. As you can see, Chariots have hopped back on top of the Ekron Miners, and they're also forcing off the Thunderers. We can see Tunis are already routing, and the third one just gets absolutely deleted there. I think they're completely gone. Setcher was uh, certainly... Not uh, planning on serving any of those dwarfs, as you can see. Yeah, completely and utterly shattered that unit in a matter of seconds. Rune Lord, however, is very good. Uh, got very good mass, so he's pretty decent at pinning in these chariots. They do have a full surround on him. We do have incantation of cursed blades coming down on Setra. But you can see the Rune Lord, he is not really fussed at all, taking very little damage and swinging his mighty hammer at these skeleton chariots, banishing them there back into the Shadow Realm. And the chariots are starting to flee from his presence. Setra thinking he can go toe to toe. He is definitely mistaken as the Rune Lord slowly wheels about and he's going to get to smiting, pointing his furious hammer at Setra. Looks like Iron Jakes have managed to push wide a little bit of this centre pocket. They'll be getting some nice flame attacks in to help these beleaguered Dwarf Warriors who are being beaten up by the Summon Shopti now. A lovely flaming strike into the side of the Tomb Guard there. Over here on the other side of the battle, it looks like Ushopti are slowly being dragged down by a combination of Dwarf Warriors and Slayers. Only eight of these bad boys left, but some Thunder of Fire is coming back in on top of the Tomb Scorpion. But great play coming by Happy Puppy with the Skeleton Chariots. Incantation of Poptinum is going to be running over these Thunderers. Force them off the field. You definitely want to shatter these guys as much as possible. The other Skeleton Chariots did try to get back on top of the cannon, but were forced back by the very healthy Dragonback Slayers, which is going to be a huge problem into the late game here for the Tomb Kings. Now in the back lines, it looks like the Ushopti still have decent ammunition. They are being chased away by Double Dwarf Warrior. But the Warriors have no chance of catching these guys. They're simply going to be able to pull apart, drag them towards the Tomb Scorpion, and then turn and get some effective fire in there as well. Chariot plate in the background. Yeah, just force off those Thunders, which is good to see. Dragonback Slayers are lurking nearby, though, so they need to be a little bit careful. In the centre pocket, once again, Setra trying to go toe-to-toes with the Rune Lord. The Master Rune of Negation has been popped as well. He is an absolute beast at the moment. He doesn't do too much damage back, but at the same time, Setra is not even going to be scratching the paint job on his uh, anvil here. But, again, happy, happy notes in this does pull apart, or pull away Setra, sorry, on top of these uh, Dwarf Warriors. And it's a good idea to try and shut down this cannon as well, who looks like he was starting to struggle to get line of sight up here on the high ground. Team Guard so do drag through their way through minus of blast and charges, but at the same time, more of them are getting overwhelmed, and there's a lot of dwarfs left on the field, currently outnumbering the uh, Tomb Kings nearly 4 to 1, which is pretty crazy stuff for the dwarfs. Miners and dwarf warriors cutting through skeleton warriors here, who are crumbling and certainly going to be sent back to once they came. Tomb Scorpion, though, still relatively healthy, up to 55 kills. The shops have managed to make a decent amount of distance as well. Looks like they are launching some shots into the Dragonback Slayers and Ekron Miners, which isn't a bad shout. They really need to pull down those uh, Slayers as much as possible and focus down the Rune Lord. Looks like the cannon is being forced off by nice cycle charging from Setra here. So, yeah, basically, Tomb Guard trying to rally as much as possible, but Dwarf Warriors are darting all around the place. Looks like one unit has been left just to chase these Yashopti as much as possible, which is a worthwhile sacrifice. They're probably going to get isolated and finished off, but if they can stop the Yashopti firing from just a couple more minutes, the Dwarf should be able to clean up the rest of this force as their Rune Lord does come in here, and he's going to body slam these Tomb Guard. Coming in with some massive swipes there as his shield bearers as well. Do some nice little shield butts themselves. Going to be swinging... 
um, their shields around. I guess they don't actually have weapons here, which is a bit unfortunate for them. That'd be a pretty terrible job, I think, going into battle. But an honour at the same time. Team Guard are starting to crumble. And you can see the forces of Zowie are starting to come together in a nice centre pocket of strength around their cannon, which is a good idea. Using the rock for cover as well against these shop tees is a decent play and stops you from getting flanked. Long Jakes should rally here, they've got a little while before they do hit the edge of the board, and six models can still do some okay burst damage. Over here, Dwarf Warriors and Ekramine, who are trying to surround the Tomb Scorpion, but realising it's a not a worthwhile fight, are going to be falling back to the relative safety of the Cannon and the Thunderers, and those poor Dwarf Warriors are getting isolated over on the flanks there, and great play by the Shopsy coming into close combat, not wanting to waste any of their ammunition on basic Dwarf Warriors. Now, every single one of their shots is going to need to go into his Rune Lord to finish him off, but there is also a Cannon, which is back online with all three artillery pieces and it is firing as well probably gonna be trying to focus down the tomb scorpion i would assume as luckily look for the dowie ekran mines are actually falling back in the correct direction a few thunderers lace a couple of bullets across the sky into the tomb scorpion as well and in come the cannon shots looks like unfortunately they were a bit of a swing in the miss but i see a couple more coming in and boom huge connection there taking the tomb scorpion down who did not like that at all whacking his claws in frustration on the ground down to 1200 health but in come the shop to fire now Focusing down the cannon, which has to be done, unfortunately, realistically. All those shots want to be going into the Rune Lord and, of course, these Dragonback Slayers, who are a fantastic counter to everything left on the field. But you can simply not allow this cannon to keep shooting. It will decimate the Scorpion, etc., and the likes. But it looks like it's missing a few of its shots here. And it has finally lost an artillery piece as well. Cannon crew are routing for the hills here. But Shopsy running danger low on ammunition, free on this unit and free on the second one. Finders should be able to get into range very shortly on the Tomb Scorpions. Looks like you Shopsy are hunting them down. The uh, hill being used, or the little um, bit of stone here at least, being used to great effect so far. But the Rune Lord is poking out a little bit now. I can see a few of those crossbows are lining up. 2,900 health and from one volley down to 2,500. That's some pretty devastating stuff. Some dwarfs were rallying here, just going to be hopping on top of the Shopsy trying to distract them as much as possible. But Setra and the Scorpion are going to be moving back here to protect. It's a very close game, but I think it's going to be tough to uh, drag down this amount of dwarfs, in particular the Dragback Slayers and the Rune Lord. But the cannon, once again, back online. These guys keep on returning. Two pieces are still going to be active here. They are moving up, getting ready to fire. Probably going to be focusing down at the Tomb Scorpion at this point. These shops here aren't the biggest threat anymore, with only two volleys each. So uh, you're not going to be able to pull them down too quickly either. Looks like a lovely... Oh, Master Moon of Negation has been popped. Just trying to neutralise some of these Ishopti Great Bow shots coming in. Assuming they are going to continue to fire. And they do indeed. So yeah, nice damage resistance there. Good play overall. And the shots are launching in. And once again, they're going to be aiming at the Cannon Crew. Which isn't a bad idea at all. So I'm going to fast forward here a bit. So it looks like we have a little bit of a stalemate as the Cannon Crew and Ishopti are simply going to trade fire. Looks like the Cannon Crew are going to go down here. In comes Setcha for a lovely charge into the front lines. Dragonback Slayers do have that glorious slow if they do manage to catch and hit you. Marsoon of Raffin has been popped as well, and that Rune Lord is coming in for that bony booty, hunting at such the imperishable down. He's trying to flee as much as possible, but of course, uh, his speed down to just 20. Oh no, that was the Rune Lord. Let's drop down to a whopping 8, which is uh, pretty horrific here. Tomb Scorpion is chucked in at the last second in an attempt to save the day. A lovely volley hitting the Rune Lord. They're doing some huge damage, but the Dragonback Slayers are far too numerous. Down goes the Scorpion crumbling, and with him gone, the army losses is certainly start coming in relatively shortly. Nice flame attacks coming down on Setra as well, helping nuke the leadership slightly. They are slightly on their own here, but there's only a few models. So if Agapa wants to, she can take Setra the Impeachable and dart round here and finish them off. But at this point, I think it's pretty much game over, unless they can somehow manage to assassinate this Rune Lord. Setra is trying his little heart out, but uh, the Rune Lord does not care. Comes in and starts slapping up those undead horses. Setra is going to have to fall back once more. Shop T starting to run for the hills as well. Dragonback Slayers not going to let them get far at all. Both of them are starting to go into critical bind in here. And now they are crumbling, which is an absolute disaster. And it looks like that is going to be game. So we're just going to finish it off here as Setcha once again does come launching back in after the Rune Lord. But he has stood firm all game and he will continue to as army losses do kick in as those Shop T do go down. Setcha coming in for one final charge. 
that was, gets deleted and smited there. So a grudge has been written out of the great book of grudges. Very well played to both competitors. So massive shout out to ha Happy Puppy and Papa Palpatine. Massive uh, thank you as well for sending this replay in. It was a super fun game overall. I quite like both builds. I think the Ushop T uh, which is relatively effectively overall. 46 and 38 kills. Definitely helped neuter a few of the threats, but they didn't finish anything off. They did lots of damage to the cannon, lots of damage to the Iron Drakes, lots of damage to the Rune Lord, but they never stuck on a target and actually ensured it was dead. And you can see, despite the fact they took so much damage early on, the Iron Drake still got 45 kills up against Tomb Guard, which is very impressive. The cannon as well still did some huge HP damage across the board. But overall, the greatest pick for me and the MVP was this basic Rune Lord. Yes, Setra still got 126 kills, but normally Setra can roll in there and just run over a Dwarf Lord rather effectively despite their magic resistance, but being on top of the Anvil and getting that whopping 55 um, uh, magic resistance is crazy. Really helped out up against Setra and was a huge backbone in the Dowie Force, pinning in those chariots as well with his big bulky mass and smiting them down like a good son of the Dowie Forces. So I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, please feel free to subscribe and stick around. We do Total War Warhammer content all week, every week. It's all super good fun. And yeah, feel free to like the video if you did enjoy. If you want to get involved and send me replays and the like, feel free to join my Discord link just down below in the description, as well as a link to my Patreon account if you want to support the channel in any other way. And anyway, guys, until next time, peace, peace, and as always, stay awesome.